This real tank's name has got to be the longest name I've ever seen. This is it. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. But translated into English it reads, Test Vehicle with 3 axis Stabilized Turret, which is exactly what it was. And this 3 axis Stabilization System is what made it so unique. Many World War II era American tanks, mainly on the Sherman, only had a stabilization system in the vertical plane only. Post-war tanks such as the Centurion Mark III, all the way to today's MBT such as the Leopard IIs and M1 Abrams have two plane of stabilization, vertical and horizontal. The experimental turret went through multiple issues which were eventually solved and successfully passed testing but was never put into service due to its high cost and difficulty of production. So what would the third axis of stabilization improve? Not much. It would counteract the roll of the tank from side to side so the gun could remain stable when aiming and loading. The benefits were that if it was on rough terrain, which would roll the tank from left to right or vice versa, the gun would be on a bearing and would roll, thereby canceling out that movement. However, I don't think Gaijin includes this as the entire time I was playing with it, I never noticed the turret moving like so. One of the reasons why it was discontinued was, besides its cost, the side-to-side -side roll in the tank wasn't much of an issue. The Sentaro dealt with this problem by having a side which would roll rather than stay in a fixed position, similarly to the gun on the, well I'm not even going to try to pronounce it, but Term 3. However, the Centaro system would be more cost effective and simpler. The turret rotated not only in yaw, but also in pitch and in roll, by virtue of having a spherical base, as that required a lot of power. A 74 kilowatt auxiliary power unit was installed in the chassis to drive the stabilization. It seems similar to the USN's quad 1.1 inch anti-air mountings of the late 1930s that had three axes of movement, the extra one slewing the gun sideways to make it easier to keep them pointing at vertical dive bombers. Or wonder though if the concept was inspired partially by French oscillating turret designs, or experiences with the German Kugelblitz SPAA, which also featured oscillating turrets. There's been quite a few naval anti-air mountings that had triaxle stabilization. The 10.5 cm SKC-33 on the Kriegsmarine cruisers in Battleship, for example. When learning about this unique stabilization system, I hate to think what the cannon's recoil would do to such a delicate mechanism. Even before terrain, rocks, and dust, mud, water, whatnot moves into it during combat. The tank was developed from a Leopard 1 chassis produced in 1966 with only one prototype built. The tank is able to develop a maximum speed of up to 65 kilometers an hour. Its main gun is the 10.5 centimeter as mentioned earlier, and it's unknown what kind of engine it had, but from what I read this thing had a horsepower of about a thousand. A surviving example is located in Koblenz, Germany. All controls of the turret movement were powered only with no manual controls. Limited internal space reduced the ammo load, so an outboard 30mm cannon with external ammunition stowage was added to combat lighter targets that may otherwise waste valuable stored ammunition. There really isn't a lot of information on this tank, and I know some of this was speculation, but outside of that, this is really all I could find. If you like this video, consider liking and subscribing to learn more about different military vehicles. You all stay cool and keep tanking.